Hello students. In our last video, we ended up with our game with the character being able to move around. We have our enemy down the bottom moving as well. We can jump and if we get hit by the enemy, our game resets, essentially giving us another go. So moving on, we're now up to this section where we're going to add in a coin. So in most games, you want some sort of uh, purpose for your player to uh, achieve a score. That could be reaching the end of a level. It could be um, a time-based thing. But in a lot of cases, it's collecting something, in this case, coins, which is going to give us a score. And having that score allows us to compare ourselves to uh, each playthrough that we do, compare ourselves to other people, and that level of competition is what we are usually looking for in a game. Can we be better than ourselves? or someone else. So this is really important. So we are going to um, start by looking at the player script as it says here. So let's open up our player script. So again, into our scripts. Now, if you've been following my version, I've got a scripts folder. If not, it's all just in one big pile in your resources, but we're looking for that player script. And this is here. And we are going to create a new function to collect a coin. So we'll do that down the bottom. So underneath the previous function that we did, which was the die function to reset our player, we're simply gonna copy in this bit of code. So I'm gonna do that straight from the uh, instructions. And some people I know have been having trouble with their spacing. So we're looking for these tab arrows. So I can see this is already a problem. So I'm going to take this bit of code all the way back to the previous line press enter to make sure it is properly tabbed one in. Now they have left a line in between and I know that's because later on they're gonna add something. So I'm gonna add that line in as well. But the important part is I've kept the tabbing uh, correct. If you're using spaces, you've gotta get the exact spaces right. So I really strongly suggest that you are using tab. So this function is gonna be passed in a value and it's simply gonna add that value to our score. Okay, so that's going to increase the score value. And right at the very start of this whole project, we initially set our score up at the top and start it with a value of zero when the game starts. So that is just going to be able to increase our score by some set value. Okay, now we're going to create a new scene, which is going to be our, um, our diamonds that we are going to collect, or our coins, I should say. So we're going to, again, create a new scene. So we're going to go scene new scene and it's going to be an area 2d so i'm going to use other node and choose area 2d so i could search for it but i've still got it available in my recents over here so it's an area 2d and we're going to uh, rename that to be coin and it doesn't really say it here but i can see that in the picture my area 2d is being called coin so i'm going to rename that here to be coin with a capital a uh, c sorry and I'm also going to give it a shape and a collision 2D. So just like we've seen before. So click on coin, I'm going to add a sprite and then click on coin again, because that's the root node. I'm going to also add a collision shape. Now they have also changed the name of the sprite from sprite to coin. Uh, again, nothing wrong with that. And I am going to follow their instructions at the moment, simply uh, so that we keep it consistent. So that if we refer to this later on, uh, it's going to follow the same naming. Okay, so I've got that. Now I need to give the sprite an actual um, asset. So I come down to my sprites folder and I'm going to drag that coin over the texture so that I can actually see it. And I'll just zoom in a bit so we can actually see what we're doing. Okay, and I need to give my collision shape an actual shape. So they've done a sphere or a circle. So I will do the same, a circle shape. And I'm just gonna make it big enough to encapsulate like they have done here. So by this stage in the tutorial, they're not telling us absolutely every single step. It is certainly something that we've done a few times now and we should be able to follow through and realize that in most cases, if we're creating something that we're going to visually see, there's going to be some form of root node, some sort of sprite, and possibly a collision shape. Let's move down. So on the area 2D root node, uh, we're going to create a new script and call it coin. So here we go. We, on the root node, we're going to create a new script. 
and we're gonna call it coin. Now mine's already called coin because that's what I renamed the node to be. And as we know from my previous videos, because I'm keeping my uh, scripts and scenes separately, I'm gonna make sure I go into my scripts folder before I then say create. So here is my default. Now they're starting with a variable and we'll go copy that out from this code as well. And we'll just put it over the top of this other variable code here. Now we should know uh, from earlier that if we use the export value or the export command, that means it's gonna become a variable that we can change in the editor. Uh, var just stands for variable, it's gonna be called value and it's got a default value of one. So this is gonna be what this coin is worth. We're then gonna add in a new um, function called process. Now this is a little bit like the uh, physics process um, function that we have seen with our kinematic bodies, but this is not a kinematic um, node, so it doesn't use a physics process, so it's not gonna to react to things like gravity and being collided with, but it does have a process. So this is something again that happens repeatedly in our game uh, so that we can um, get something to happen like you know, every frame of the, the game essentially. And we can see in the default, there is a, a function process. So I'm gonna copy this over the top of that one. And again, I'm just gonna go back and like I've said before, fix up any tab issues. So I'm gonna bring this line back and press enter to be tabbed in correctly. And the same with this one to make sure my tabbing is correct. So this um, process here is going to be rotating our value, rotating um, this, uh, this node basically by 90 degrees every uh, rotation, every second essentially, all right? And that's gonna give the effect of spinning. Okay, so that's what we've got so far. Next, we're gonna to need to select the area 2D node. So again, that is our root node up the top here and we're going to go across to the node section because we're going to be using, again, the body entered signal. So we can see that here. And when the body is entered, so we'll choose that, we can just connect to this um, default, uh, default named script. Okay, so it's part of the script that we're in and we can copy this. So we've already got the function name there. So we're not gonna copy that part. We'll just copy this secondary part here and it will place the pass with that and again i'm just going to fix up any tabbing issues so i'm going to bring it back and make sure that my if is tabbed in one and then the parts that are part of the if are tabbed in two to make sure i don't have any of those uh, mixed tab spaces and indentations that we saw temporarily there so this is going to be when the something collides with our coin we're first again going to check is that body, whatever's colliding called player. If it is, we're gonna say, use the body and call the method collect coin, passing the value. The value is what we have up here, basically the worth of this coin. And then we're using a new thing called Q3. Now Q3 is a command that essentially means take this particular node or scene and remove it from the game. So essentially the coin has been collected, get rid of the coin so we can't collect it again. Okay, uh, let's just see if there's anything else. Nope. So now we're going to go back to our main scene. So again, go down to our scenes, open our main scene, go to the 2D view of the main scene, and we basically need to put some coins in. But notice I forgot to save. So let's save this uh, in our scripts and save. No, I've done that in the wrong spot. Sorry, I just realized that I moved, I saved my coin scene in my scripts folder, not in my scene. Now, I could have claimed that I did that deliberately. I didn't, but it does give us an opportunity to make a change. So if you make a mistake like that, it's easy, just drag it. So we're gonna chuck that in the scenes folder instead. Okay, so nice and easy to fix that problem up. So anyway, back to the main screen, uh, we're gonna put a few coins in. So we can take our coin scene and we can drag one in just like we've done with other things. Now I'm gonna put one here and I'm just gonna move my player across a little bit uh, at the moment and I'm gonna put a couple more coins in around the place for my player to collect. Okay, so they can go there. Let's uh, try playing the game now and we can see, oh, something's happened with my coins. They've dropped down a little bit, but that's okay. We'll investigate that in a second. 
But if I collect them, oh, look what's happening. Okay, my uh, coins are moving with my player. Now, I know why that is. And again, I could claim that I did this deliberately, but I didn't. Um, because I moved that player for a moment, I had player node selected. So when I dragged those three last coins in, you can see they've become children of the player. So they're moving around just like the player. They need to be, like the first one was at least, a child of main scene, not a child of my player. And in fact, I'd like these three to be down the bottom. Okay, and just like I've done with my tiles, and again, this is a little bit different to what the uh, tutorial has been showing, but I want to group these coins together to make it a bit easier. So again, I'm going to choose main scene. I'm going to simply add a, a very basic node. I'm going to rename this one to be coins. And then I'm actually going to create uh, or move all those coins to be a child of that folder of coins, if you like, just to try and keep this nice and neat. But if I play that now, you notice, first of all, my coins didn't fall down. And secondly, they're no longer moving with my, um, my player. And we can see how they're doing that nice rotation, uh, which was part of the code from before. And if I collect them, each time I hit one, it's queue freeing, which is removing them from the game. So, so far I can collect those, but they're not doing much for me, or at least I'm not seeing a score. I do actually have a score increasing um, in the background, but so far we haven't been able to show that, which is going to be coming up shortly. Um, before we close this video, of course, we're not doing too badly for time. It's only just on 12 minutes. We will do the camera. So again, if I look at my game at the moment, if I was to go all the way across uh, my screen, for example, you can see that the, nothing has moved with me. I'm all the way at the cross and that there's no like movement of a camera. So if this was a bit wider, I would go off the screen uh, and we wouldn't be able to see the player anymore. So we want to bring in a camera. So we're going to again start from a main scene and we're going to add a new node. So select the main scene, add a new node of type camera. And again, like most of the nodes, we're looking for the 2D version, not the 3D version. So let's add that camera in, okay? Um, we need to enable it. Now, when you have a camera by default, so if we go back to the inspector with the camera chosen, by default, cameras are not turned on. So we need to take the current and turn it on so that that is the camera that we're seeing. And look what happened. I'll just zoom out a little bit. Before we talked about this space here is what will be seen in our game window. But now when we turn that camera on, you can see here is what the camera is going to show. So I'm going to move the view of that camera so it is showing, um, again, the, the main window that I was having before. Okay, so it's essentially not much different to what we had earlier. We're now going to create a script, okay? So we're going to, with that camera 2D, we're going to add um, a script to it or attach a script. Now we're going to call it camera controller. So it's a little bit different this time. I'm not just going to go with the default name. We want to call this one camera controller. Uh, no particular reason, just that's what the, the, um, the tutorial said. So again, we're following along with that for the moment. So it's extending from camera 2D, so it has all the functionalities of a camera. And we're going to start with an on ready, okay? So let's chuck this up here. Now, we talked about on ready before, how that means wait till this whole uh, scene has loaded to make sure that we've got everything we need before we try and do something that might not work properly if it wasn't fully loaded. Now, it's going to get a reference to... Um, the player, okay? And this is something I also know a lot of students make mistakes. So if you haven't been naming your things exactly the same, then this path may not work. So this path is saying, go to the root. So the root is the very, very top. Then go to the main scene. So that's our main scene there. And then we find the player as a child of it, which this is. And all the capitals are important. So if you haven't named your scenes the same, so I know some students have only put the word main. So if you had main scene, it won't be able to find it. And you'll get an error about a null value most likely. In fact, let me demonstrate. So mine is called main scene, but if I 
take this word C now, I'm going to get an error when I try and run this that it doesn't know how to find it. Now, it's probably going to be okay for the moment because it's not referencing it yet, uh, but that will happen. So I might do that again in a second. But the point is, you have to keep your names the same, including capitalizations, right? The order and everything has to match. Now, one way you can get around this to make sure you don't make a mistake, I'll just demonstrate, is if you take this out and you're not sure what the full path is, you can actually drag it in. So I've got the quotation marks, but I'm gonna take the play, which I'm trying to refer to, and I'm simply gonna drag it in to that spot. And it will actually add in a, uh, a valid path. Now, I should have actually taken out a couple of quotes, but it will actually add a valid path. Um, you can see this does look a bit different, but this is basically saying, hey, go back one level. So here's the camera, go back a level, which takes the main screen, and then find player. Both of those will be correct, okay? But that way you can actually get the exact path if you like. I'm gonna stick with what was originally there, so I'm just gonna undo for a moment and keep what's there. Right, we're now gonna add our process. So we talked about process in the last section, so it's like the um, physics process, but it's what happens when we're not using physics. And again, I'm just gonna fix up some tabbing here by doing that. And basically, when this processes, it's going to get the position, the X position at least, and then it's going to change the play, um, sorry, the X position of our camera, because that's what we're in, and it's going to make that match the X position of the player. Okay, so the player that we've referenced up here, we're going to get its X position and make the camera's X position the same. And that has the um, effect of moving the camera with our player. Now there's one more thing uh, that it's doing and it's setting up a margin. So let's um, look at the margin. So if we have a look at our camera again, if we have a look uh, in the camera 2D and where is the margins? Oh, let me see, what's it trying to do? Um, inspector, set the drag margins to, oh, right here, of course, drag margins on, we'll turn them on. Okay, uh, so that way we um, can limit them. Now, we want to limit them just to zero at the moment. Okay, so we're making all of these zero for the moment just to make it a little bit neater. So if we play this now, oh, we've got a small problem. And my small problem was that my camera has actually moved. So choosing the camera, choosing the move option, and bringing my camera back into the right position should fix that. And as always, um, you know, I'm not here to say I do everything perfectly. You just saw I, I had some trouble. Uh, and I realized, of course, that I didn't set the right thing. I was supposed to be setting the drag margins but I actually broke the limit. So I'm just gonna reset those values and you'll see that's moving my um, my camera around basically so I can put that camera back where I expected it to be. And I should have been opening the drag margins and setting those back to zero. That's what I should have just done to match this part here. If I play it again now, that's better. That's what I expected to have. So now as I move around, you can see my camera is moving with my player okay so it's x position so you see when i jumped up the camera didn't move up and down because it's only matching the x position of my player okay so that way i could in theory make a, an infinitely long level uh, that i could move across okay um, so there we go that's how we add in our camera so we'll leave it there for this video. We've added coins and we've added a camera that we can move around and we should be right to keep going from there.